sell crap so I can stack my riches Now I pack gaps to stop all the snitches from staying in my business What is this? Relentless approach to know if I'm broke or not Just cause I joke and smoke a lot Don't mean I don't tote the clock Sixteen shots for my niggas in the pen Until we motherfucking meet again I'm doing rhymes now, fuck the crimes now Come on the app, I'm real hard to find now Cause I'm knee deep in the beats In the Land Cruiser Jeep with the Mac 10 by the seat Hi guys, you're back with Juzzy, and you're looking at my new ride. Welcome to my 2022 Suzuki GSX S750. This bike I've just purchased from a fellow interstate. <clears throat> he lived in Sydney, and I'm in Brisbane. So basically, I've been on the hunt for a new bike for probably a couple of months now, whilst I listed the Tweet Rebel up for sale. And right at a time when I was selling my bike, I actually came across this bike. I had alerts on Facebook Marketplace and on bike sales all over the country. And this bike popped up from Sydney. So it was literally about, probably you'd say 10 minutes ride from the Sydney airport. The seller purchased the bike six weeks ago, bought it brand new from a dealership and rode it for about six weeks, put 400 kilometers onto the bike and decided that the bike had the wrong riding, so sort of rising riding style for him. That's how he said it. So he's a bit taller than me and yeah, the bike just wasn't for him. He bought it, no finance, finance checks uh, cleared perfectly fine. The bike is 100% standard and so i reached out to him asked him to send me some videos send me pictures all around which he did i did the finance check it cleared all properly and so then i began the sort of nervous process of trying to transport it to my home so i engaged a company at the recommendation of my friend who had bought a bike from a dealership secondhand and had it shipped to Brisbane. And that company is called MTL. So the website's www.coremtl.com.au. So I put up a, a um, uh, address details in there, waited for a call back, and before you know it, the bike was picked up, it was delivered, had super excellent service from that company, no hesitation in recommending them. I also recommended the buyer of my Rebel um, who is actually in South Australia to use that company and so it actually turned out that on the same day I was arranging the purchase of this bike in the morning I came home and then I actually had the truck come to collect my Rebel to um, put it in a storage so that it would go to South Australia so yeah it was a really busy day just over a week ago um, you would have seen my posts on um, Instagram and if you're in Australia in the Rebel groups, but that time has now passed and I've now moved on to a new bike. So I do have some parts left over from the Rebel. I had made a video with my friend Pippa just showing me removing the eight bars, putting it back to a drag bar setup and uh, side mount license plate. So for all of you who are curious, that's what I did. I sold the bike looking the way that a lot of you did like. And I ended up selling the next day the 8 bars to someone locally in Brisbane. But I do have the um, Rebel headlight cows for the LED version. So I had two of those if you look back in my history. If you're interested. Alright, so now I'll just talk a little bit about the odometer. And some of the parts that I'm going to be sort of installing and talking about on this channel so just turned it on as you can see there 437 kilometers um, perfect cluster it does not appear to have a screen cover on it no it doesn't so um, if you're so you are more than likely if you're watching this video and you're interested in this bike you definitely would not have been subscribed to my channel and so I just thought I'll talk about what I do on this channel, the parts that I install, and what my vision is for this bike. So I'm 45 years old, I live in Brisbane, Australia. I bought a Suzuki 12 years ago to ride. After about two years, I ended up selling it because of a change of life direction. 
essentially I got married, settled down, um, bought property, worked, and now my child's older, uh, about to turn nine. So about two years ago, I bought a Honda Rebel. I bought that bike with the intention of modding it. I love doing modifications to cars, uh, to bikes, to anything around the house, etc. And after becoming familiar with riding for about two years, I decided that I wanted to sell that bike so that I could get a bit more speed. So that was a great bike to ride, built up a, a really good fan base on my channel. My, my channel grew sort of um, uh, by three. Uh, at that time, I think I had 800 subscribers and now I've just reached 3,000. A lot of people watch my channel because they like watching the how-tos. Um, it's not interesting. There's no awesome music and no special cutscenes. I simply just talk thoroughly through my installs. And so I find that that helps people. It means that my watch time is high and so that I get good revenue from the videos that I make. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what I intend to do with this bike. So uh, the channel name is Juzzy Evo X, which predominantly uh, is in relation to my car. However, I did actually um, do a lot of video uploads under Tweet Rebel, and now I'll be doing a lot of videos under Tweet GSX. So this bike actually is a nice bike to ride from factory. I have ridden one before uh, buying it, but as if anything, there's lots of room for improvement, and I'm not necessarily talking about changing the look of it so much. It's really just doing the things that people love to do because they're easy mods, but people just sort of go online to make sure um, that the, the modifications are done the right way and that you know things sound right, they look cool, etc. etc. And that's the sort of market that I'm trying to hit with this bike. So I'll just talk about some of these mods now. So basically the first thing that sticks out to me on this bike is the rear tail tidy. So in America, I know you call this a fender eliminator. So basically I've bought just a generic um, uh, eBay um, rear fender eliminator where this part gets removed, the indicators, uh, reflector and light will go a lot back. The good news is though, is that I'll actually be putting on a Kojima aftermarket LED indicator set. So a lot of people, when they, I notice, tend to buy the Yoshimura brand and they like it because it comes with the indicators and the cables so you don't have to cut and solder tube up your um, indicators, etc., etc. But I actually went with the Kojima brand because Kojima is a very well-established aftermarket part supplier for um, all Japanese bikes and I think that they're not, they're not really well known across the world but they are super well known particularly in the Honda Rebel community and I'll have the links and all that to the install for my bike so that's basically got the rear indicators and the front indicators with the appropriate cables so that you simply disconnect from the loom plug in the new one and it's complete plug and play so easy um, so that's the first thing that I'd like to do Second thing, I've purchased a Yoshimura R11 exhaust for this bike. So on my last bike, I just bought an eBay cheapie because the bike is not fast. It, and certainly it had no, to me, it had no, um, I didn't have a reason to buy an expensive exhaust for that bike that I knew was I was only gonna keep for a relatively short period of time and that was gonna add no performance increase to the bike. Whereas this is a much more respected bike much more sporty looking. Yoshimura for 40 odd years has been making fantastic exhaust systems. I had one on my Suzuki 12 years ago. It was perfectly fitting, sounded really good, gave me no issues whatsoever, and just had a lot of respect um, in the game basically. So Yoshimura R11 exhaust, made in Japan, JDM domestic market uh, product, not the American ones, so not the Yoshimura Alpha series, and certainly not the knockoff AliExpress ones that you'd find um, for cheap that you can put on your bike. Now, it would be hypocritical, hypocr ugh, hypocritical of me to say that it, there's a problem with putting cheapy exhaust on a bike when I've just done that on my last bike. However, if you can on this type of bike, if you can get a better exhaust, I certainly think that it's well more worth it. 
The bike costs a lot more. It has much better performance than a standard cruiser. So, you know, if you're sort of following me on my um, move away from the Rebel scene into the Suzuki scene and you're looking for an upgrade bike and you're just sort of getting some ideas from what I want to do, I think that's a worthwhile investment. So that exhaust brand new costs somewhere around fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars delivered from Japan, and that's through quite a reputable site like We Bike Japan. I actually purchased mine um, front second hand from a seller on eBay, which has a hundred percent feedback and has sold well over four hundred exhausts. Um, the, the item listing had something like, oh, I think thirty pictures in comparison to many other people that just only had one or two. And I was quite happy with the condition of the bike and picked it up for an absolute steal in comparison to the new price. So that'll be coming as well. So I was just talking before about um, loving the look of the 2018 black, blue, black look. And I thought, okay, maybe that's something I could do. And so you can buy those parts because they're just plastic parts. They're fairing parts that you can just pick up from Suzuki themselves or you can even buy them on eBay and they are on AliExpress. So I'm in two minds. I actually don't mind the look of this color scheme, but yes, it's not my perfect, um, what's the word? It's not the way that I like to, to, to envision the bike personally. And I don't actually like these forks. So the forks, um, there is a Z model that comes out on this bike and it actually has black forks. Pay extra for that sort of special edition. Uh, it's kind of like a, um, a version of the Honda Rebel special edition where it did have blacked out parts there. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with this one, whether it means I'm going to either wrap the forks in black or even carbon fiber or whether I'm going to do a plasti dip on the forks. I'm just not so sure. So I think, I guess what I'll be doing at some stage is looking at trying to remove the front fender and just seeing what sort of maneuverability I have around the forks so that I can black them out. For those of you that don't know about this bike, this bike came with black forks, I think somewhere up to around 2020, I'm not 100% sure. And then they brought it out as gold as a standard color. And then there was a Z version. You paid extra to put it back to black, which is what they did in the first place. It does mean that when you see this bike, you know that it's a newer bike, but aesthetically, I think that the black looks better. It doesn't tie in with anything else on the bike. And yeah, it's just my preference. So the, the lights will change, the exhaust will change, the forks will change. Um, the front headlight so the headlight the lamp itself is actually a yellow lamp and in many people's reviews online they talk about the light being dull not spreading and seeing the, the, the sort of road and freeway highway so well so I've bought a Philips Crystal Vision LED H4 bulb to go in and replace that one and then in that kit it comes with two T10 LED bulbs white or white um, so that the headlight not only looks cool instead of having a yellow appearance to it but it will spread the light out white and just look so much better so that actually has as you can see the standard globe that comes in from factory from Suzuki the one that's notorious for being hopeless at sort of giving you enough light to see where you're going at night time and I'm looking forward to getting rid of that now I have actually purchased and I've just got it up here a Motozar um, rear seat cow so basically in Australia in order to make your registration eligible for single seat registration so that you get a discount on your registration the only thing you have to do there's two requirements the back seat has to be less than 50 centimeters in length, which this easily is. It's well less than 30, probably 25. If your seat is less than that, you don't need to change it. You can leave it there, but you do have to get rid of your pegs. So the pegs will be coming off so that I can register it as a single seater. I've got no interest in having a, a, a pavilion, a passenger on the back of my bike at all. 
And whilst I think the seat actually looks pretty cool, like if you look at the flow of the bike, it looks super good. I did, just for argument's sake, buy this um, cover, and it doesn't go over the seat, I'm just sitting it there for now. But it's from Motorzar, and Motorzar makes what a lot of people in the groups say is the best visor that you can purchase for this bike. So you go on eBay, you search um, S750 visor, and it comes up with a fellow from Thailand that sells them. I know for um, argument's sake that you can buy Motorzar um, products from different sellers. I've bought parts for my Rebel from different sellers, but um, yeah, my intention is to remove, take off that seat. There's a bracket that comes um, underneath here that you bolt in to the, to the back part of the seat cowl. You remove this seat and you pop this on. So that'll be going on soon. So yeah, I bought the Motorzar visor. So it's a relatively low one, but just the, the design of it and um, you know, it's, it's fully smoked out. Looks really good. I think it's going to add to the appearance of the bike. Next thing. So on my last bike, I really, really liked SSK levers. So SSK, um, also known as Speedra, make they're, they're a large um, aftermarket part supplier for Japanese bikes. And I purchased again some three piece levers. So these are the factory levers that come on the bike. Uh, some people say that the reach is too far. For me, it's just right. I don't have a massive hand. I've just, I actually wear a medium glove. You've got your adjuster like you'd normally see on some sports bikes, but yeah, in terms of um, reaching as a brake, it's certainly very comfortable for me. So this guy had it on three from factory, but I've bought some adjustable levers. Um, the intention is, is that you can um, have the handlebar length uh, not so wide and you can change the colors and whatnot, but I've just gone pretty much all black for mine. Just to, I knew that that was gonna be um, a good look on any bike, any S750 that I was about to purchase. I actually also bought some new grips for the bike, but I don't know if I'll necessarily change them out. My, my original feeling was that I hadn't secured a bike and I just wanted to have a new feeling bike with, with some quite soft handles. Now these handles are actually relatively soft. I'd probably say that they're medium actually, more medium to hard, but they're actually decently soft enough. But the handlebars are actually, um, one inch in the middle and they taper down to seven eighths of an inch so around about 22 mil at the grips and I think a lot of people tend to complain about vibrations when they change mirrors on this bike because the grips are actually quite narrow and I, I feel that in, in comparison to a Rebel where it's one inch all the way through um, I didn't really have may, many issues with vibrations in the mirrors so I did actually buy a set of Kojima aftermarket Mirror, um, grips to go on this bike. The bike does come, as you can see here, with a Phillips um, screw on the end so that you can look at installing some bar in mirrors. I may actually do that, but for right now, I've actually purchased some Fenrir mirrors. So basically, unwind the factory mirrors, put the Fenrir ones on, and it's a much nicer look than this sort of shape. To me, this shape is just too big. The mirrors are way too large for this bike. <laughs> you can see there, they just, yeah, kind of looks disgusting. So just some little things also I've bought. I've um, bought a cover here for the reservoir because when I look at the bike, I feel that that area just sticks out a bit. Um, gives a little bit of protection as well, but ultimately it's just to sort of blacken out the bike. So later on the line, if I do decide to change colors and go blue, then they're easy to get. Probably it costs about 400 Australian dollars to change to that look. You don't need to change anything on the back. The one thing I can't get around though, because this is a 2022, this G sticker here is under the clear. So whilst I can see the outline for the sticker, you run your nail over it and you can see, you can feel and see clearly that it's under it. 
So that means that this area here either has to be blacked out. If I do remove this sticker, and this, this is a sticker on top that can be peeled off. So are these ones here, so they are as well. This one is as well. Yep, that one can be peeled. That one's definitely peelable, as too is that one. But unfortunately, yeah, the X on this side is also under the clear. So what I then decided I would do is if I do go that route, you can get a carbon cover to go on here and that would mean I'd have the carbon seat, the carbon tank and to tie it all together I actually purchased a carbon surround for the headlight. So this sticker also comes off but on the bike this part of the headlight particularly on the 2018 models those sort of older models of this bike this part here because it's not gloss it wears over time and a lot of people that don't um, treat this plastic by putting something like forever black on it and just keeping it you know nice and prestige it actually fades quite a lot so I have actually purchased this, the carbon surround which is all one piece that goes up through here and my intention is to put that on um, at the very least to match the rear seat but I'm undecided on the tank depending how I like the color so the good news is is that when I go to take put the bulb in for for this bike um, i'll be doing an install for that showing people how it's done and i may be able to put the carbon insert in at that time in fact i will do that and i will actually change over the indicator bulbs um, you can also purchase a carbon insert for this part of the bike as well so this is just soft plastic and for those that are looking to buy this bike and you're just doing some research it's actually quite a um, soft or moving sort of forgiving piece it's not more of a firmer piece like this one so the only thing I haven't seen is I haven't been able to find this one in blue on um, online I can find all the other parts but not that one so it looks like even if I do buy non-genuine ones here, I may actually have to end up getting that one painted. And then the problem is, is that it may not match the blue that I get um, when it's non-genuine. So I might have to ring up Suzuki and just find out how much the genuine parts cost. Now you can buy carbon parts as well for this part and this part um, on, on eBay, AliExpress, and I forget what the name of the websites are, but there's a couple that sell them directly. Um, but personally, I'm, I don't want it to be genuine carbon fiber. I'm quite happy with the hydro dipped look. I'm not looking to shed any weight. I just want it to look good. I have actually also purchased a radiator cover. So from factory, I'm not sure if you can see that but there is no cover there from factory. So there is a bit of dirt here from the tire spinning, picking up some, some dirt, just one little wash and that'll be cleaned up. But, but because this is a street bike, S designation rather than R, I'll actually be putting the radiator cover on here so that I can avoid any rocks coming up and leaving me with a puncture to my radiator, which will leave me with radiator coolant on the ground. So, Many of those parts have arrived. I won't show you them now. If you're interested in seeing them though, I do actually have them um, posted on my new Instagram. So the IG is tweaked GSX. All of the parts as they arrive, I have been um, posting them up. So I think I've pretty much covered everything. I have bought an SSK carbon tank pad cover for here. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Today the quad lock uh, mount arrived for here, so I will be doing an install to the battery. But yeah, as you can see I've got lots to talk about. This video has gone for 20 minutes and I've only been talking about what I plan to do for the bike for parts that I've actually purchased. So yeah, there's probably about 20 odd videos or so in that. So I hope that you join me on this venture. It's now January 2024. I intend to keep this bike at least for a couple of years, just like my previous bike. And who knows, if I like it so much, I um, may well just keep it and never sell it. 
Thanks for watching guys. I hope that you hit like and subscribe. I'd love to hear your feedback and comments on my decision to move to this platform. And if you've got this bike and you've seen some me talking about some of these mods in this video, give me a shout out and just let me know what your thoughts are. I do plan to do some rev bomb videos with the exhaust. I know plenty of people in this scene absolutely love that, um, but that will be coming in due time, probably in about two weeks or so. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope to see you in the next video. Niggas wanna know how I live the Mac life Making money smoking mics like crack pipes It's type simple and plain to maintain